Let's get one thing straight. It's impossible to defy the laws of physics. Everything works within them. However, there are many quirks to modern physics, and obviously, there is so much left to understand. Some inventions, like the warp drive, really have forced us to revisit long-established laws of physics. Let's uncover them now. Amazing! Number 10. Dipping hand into lead. Molten metal is hot, but molten lead isn't as hot as you expect. Only 327.5 degrees centigrade. Still, it seems ridiculous to suggest that you can dip your hand at molten lead briefly without injury. You'd expect to be burnt instantly, right? If you dipped a bare hand into the molten metal, then yes, this would definitely occur. But a thin layer of water may be enough to protect the hand for a short time. This is due to the light and frost effect. When you dip an object coated in water into a hot liquid, the water boils and evaporates very quickly, forming a protective layer of steam. This can actually protect a human hand when dipped in molten lead. Of course, the effect is temporary, and leaving your hand in the metal for anything longer than a tiny fraction of a second will likely result in your hand being maimed. Number 9. Perpetual Motion Machines The idea behind perpetual motion machines is that you can set them going and they will continue in motion forever. They have been a curiosity to inventors, as they'd solve many issues associated with energy loss in mechanical systems. Perpetual motion machines date back to the 1600s, when Robert Flood's 1618 water screw was developed to rotate a milestone continuously by pumping the water that powered the machine back to its own tank. The same body of water would then continuously run the machine. You don't need a fresh supply. Another machine named the Macintosh wheel utilized magnets to help it spin seemingly forever, and now we can make refined versions of this with neodymium magnets which could rotate for years, the time it takes for the magnets to lose their attractive force. However, since energy can neither be created nor destroyed, these machines can't technically produce energy on their own. They just seem like they can for a short while. For example, the water screw would lose energy due to friction. True perpetual motion machines are impossible, as they violate the first and second laws of thermodynamics, which essentially state that energy must come from somewhere and cannot be created without input, and also that a mechanical system will eventually move towards a state of disorder and thus will eventually cease to function. Number 8. Vacuum Cleaners Can Lift Cars the famous Mythbusters team set out to see how effective a vacuum cleaner was at picking up heavy objects. After some success with lighter objects, they decided to see if they could lift a car. Sounds pretty unbelievable, right? Well, it's not because lifting power increases linearly with the cross-sectional area of the attachment as long as the same amount of air is being whisked away at the same rate. Because the Mythbusters built suction cups that covered such a large area, they could lift much more than the 5 pound or 2.3 kilograms that the standard attachment could lift. The team built 40 suction cups, all connected to a single vacuum, and they were able to lift the car to the crane's maximum height. Some mathematicians believe that a human could lift a car up with a big straw if they could get a tight enough seal and large enough attachment area. I think we'd all like to see that. Number 7. Warp Drive Engine The challenge of space travel has always been top of the agenda for many of the world's most advanced technology developers. And now, we've reached a point where travel within our solar system is relatively efficient with the advent of reusable rockets. The technological horizon now extends to traveling beyond our solar system, interstellar travel that enables us to travel to new solar systems in pursuit of a new Earth. The problem is, traveling to some of the nearest and more promising exoplanets in Proxima b would still take us more than 80 years, if we can travel at the speed of light. Current spacecraft only travel around 84,000 kilometers per hour though, which is a tiny fraction of the speed of light. And with current spacecraft, the journey to systems like Proxima b would take 54,400 years. The upshot of this is we need to break or warp some of the laws of classic physics, Newton's laws of motion, in order to facilitate interstellar travel. One proposed method suggests using a warp drive which compresses time in front of a spacecraft and expands it behind the spacecraft. 
it wouldn't be moving via the use of fuel and engines. Instead, space-time would be manipulated around it, shortening the distance between A and B, whilst traveling in a bubble, which compresses huge interstellar distances. Whilst the concept was initially seen as completely outlandish, both NASA and Chinese space agencies have successfully tested devices which bounce microwaves around chambers in order to create thrust without fuel. No one knows exactly why they got this result, though. Number 6. Spin Top Toy A spinning top seems like such a simple thing, one of the simplest toys ever invented, in fact. The tippy top, however, is a little bit more odd. It's a type of spinning top that goes the opposite way to a normal one by inverting itself after spinning upside down. It gains momentum until it reaches a critical point and then spontaneously inverts itself. That's pretty cool in itself, but the tippy top developed by Tadashi Tokiida is a bit more confusing. This tippy top acts in the way you expect when you spin it in one direction but when you spin it in the other direction, it seemingly fails to behave in the way you'd expect it to. So, why does it have a preference? This Harvard scientist admits that no one really understands why this occurs with the toy, but it has something to do with the chirality of the spin top. Chirality explains how mirror image shapes can have different properties despite their apparent symmetry. For example, its weight or some of its molecules or ions may be asymmetric across its cross-section. Number 5. Space Elevator Traveling from the surface of Earth to space currently requires the use of rockets. Today, rocket launches are relatively efficient, but SpaceX's latest rocket still required energy, equivalent to 4 million tons of TNT to launch. Basically, then, there is a huge demand for slicker, cheaper, and simpler methods for getting a lot of stuff and satellites into space. One proposed solution is by building a space elevator which extends beyond our atmosphere. This enormous structure is essentially a cable which stretches from the surface of Earth to space and would allow us to transport supplies into space without the need for rockets. The primary issues are strength and flexibility. Such a structure would have to flex with the Earth's rotation and it'd need to be enormous, 100 kilometers or so tall. Originally, carbon nanotubes were thought strong enough, but now, diamond nanothreads could be the key to space elevator technology. Best of all, a giant Japanese construction company believes we could have the technology to manufacture an elevator of this size using this material by 2050. Number 4. Square Wheels Triangles, squares, octagons, hexagons. They're all inferior when compared to the mighty wheel, which is seen as one of early humankind's greatest creations. It's counterintuitive to think that a square wheel would do anything other than wreck a car. Mythbusters first set out to see whether it was possible to obtain a smooth ride by driving a vehicle with square wheels, a seemingly impossible task. If you attach four square wheels all at the same angle, the ride is pretty horrific, and the axles break pretty quickly. By adjusting the angles of the wheels so they're at 22.5 degree angles to each other, the point of contact between the points of the squares and the ground occur more frequently, and thus the ride is smoother. Drive fast enough, and it's possible to achieve a semi-tolerable ride with square wheels in this configuration. The team also set out to see whether square wheels would benefit hill climbing, but they didn't find any advantage to using them. Number 3. Sailboat Propelled by Onboard Fan Out of all of the quirky experiments out there used to illustrate how simple laws of physics like Newton's laws of motion are more complex than they seem, this one can really get you scratching your head. In a normal sailboat, wind hits the sail in the direction of travel, filling the sail to then generate thrust. So, how could you generate thrust in a sailboat without wind? Here, Mythbusters show how a fan can be used to propel a sailboat. This is counterintuitive. Think about it. The fan has to blow against the sail. This means it is pulling air from behind the boat and pushing it to the front of the boat. This means we'd expect the boat to travel backwards, the opposite direction to air traveling through the fan. But despite this, if you place a sail in front of this fan, the sailing boat instead goes forwards. This seemingly contradicts Newton's third law, which would state that the boat should move in the opposite direction from the direction the fans intake. What is really happening here is the fan generates a force which strikes the sail, and then some air rebounds backwards off the sail, propelling the sailing boat forward. 
So Newton's third law still applies. The boat is moving away from air that is reflected from the sail. Still, if you actually want to move fast, it's much more efficient just to point the fan out the back of the boat. Number 2. Bending Bullets The elusive ability to fire bullets from a weapon, whilst hidden round corners or obstacles, was researched during World War II, and the Krumlov was developed as part of the Nazis' rather large effort to innovate their weaponry. Suggesting that a bullet which travels at a thousand feet per second can be bent in a matter of a couple of feet seems a bit ridiculous. You may speculate that the bullet would just conform to its straight path and penetrate through the barrel itself, but you'd be wrong. The Nazis were obsessed with experimental weaponry, but this device, unlike many others, at least partially worked. It used carefully placed holes to disperse turbulent gases. It enabled the Sturmgewehr 44 to fire rounds over obstacles or round corners, but the challenge was retaining accuracy and reliability. Many prototypes simply didn't fire or blew up until eventually one was developed which worked at close range. The bullets would often disintegrate due to the higher pressures of gas within the barrel, and the barrel itself only had a lifespan of a few hundred rounds. Taking this to the extreme, a bullet will even fire with a 180 degree barrel. The unusual thing about doing this is it still recoils, but forward like it's being pulled away from you. Today, more advanced weapons like the Israeli corner shot enable this via the use of a digital camera attached to a bendable detachment, with a pistol attached. Number 1. Driving Motorbikes and Cars on Water If vehicles could effectively drive over water, then there'd be no need for bridges or crossings. Obviously, this isn't actually possible, but we can temporarily force land vehicles over water. A normal, unmodified motorbike can travel a few hundred feet on water. The only thing is, you really do have to go quite fast. This takes advantage of water surface tension. With a car, the results are not so amazing, but with enough speed, a car can effectively skip over a few meters of water. This is because the car bounces off the surface, meaning it can travel forward far enough to clear the water. There are some seriously confusing bits of kit here. It just goes to show that the laws of physics, though often seen as concrete and basic, behave in more complex ways than we commonly understand. Which experiment did you think was the most interesting? Let me know in the comments down below. Thanks for watching.